As we consider baptism in this movement, as we, if we follow the pattern of what we see in the traditional American church, um, we would wait uh, not just months but years or wait to attend a baptism class where typically just the, the pastor or the leader does the baptism. But when we look in scripture, we see that baptism is something that happens immediately. And if you look at John 4, we see that Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples baptized. So it's, a, it's imperative in this movement that we release people, based on the scriptures, to try to encourage baptism as an act of obedience right away, as soon as possible. If they have faith in Christ, then they are qualified to be baptized. And that's the example we see in the scripture. And that if you've led that person to Christ, if you've made a disciple, then you are able to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's important to not encourage delayed obedience in the area of baptism because of these man-made um, principles or practices, but to really see what does the scripture say? Because uh, we wanna see these people uh, respond in obedience uh, sooner than later and we want our disciples who are making disciples uh, to follow the example we see in scripture and do the baptisms themselves. They did a baptism service and they just asked their neighbor like, hey, can we use your pool? And the guy's like, well, yeah, can I come? Or it's like his hot tub? So. I have Ray. Okay, you should add Gary. If you can, I mean, I don't know. But what was so cool is that <laughs> this guy, so, he, this unsaved neighbor is allowing him to use their hot tub to do baptism, okay? So these, uh, he's like, can I, can I come to baptism service? Like, like at his own house, like, sure, you can come. So then they're, like, people are noticing that others are going to this house for something. So the, the neighbors all just, they're like, well, what's going on? So they all come out and they witness this baptism and they're sharing the gospel, you know, during the baptism to explain why they're doing it. And, and so all these neighbors are watching this baptism happen, and they said, hey, this, you know, we're starting this church in this neighborhood, and we're going to study the Bible. And people are like, well, we want to come to that. So like this baptism service in this person, unsaved person's backyard led to all these people in the neighborhood coming to this church, and, and a number of them got saved. It was pretty cool. It's important in the movement of multiplying disciples and churches that new disciples obey the command of Christ to be baptized. And we see in the Scripture like an example of the Ethiopian eunuch or others, that they didn't wait to be baptized. It was something that happened right away. And if they had faith in Christ, it was an outward expression of an inward commitment that they were to be baptized. Uh, the other thing that we notice from Scripture, in John 4, we notice that Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples baptized. So we see the example of disciples baptizing their new disciples. I think that's important in the movement, that we, we follow the scripture as far as obedience to baptism sooner than later, and that we release people, that disciples be able to baptize their new disciples.